What's up, guys? It's King Daddy D Mac, and welcome, welcome back to another episode of Megan and Mod Sauce. That's right, that's right. How's everybody doing? How's everybody doing? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. I'm super psyched. We got the last, hopefully, the last part of our whole uh, Wither Generator Nether Star production factory and quarries hopefully we're gonna get it all finished today i'm hoping i'm hoping um last time we set up a uh, nice little quarry in the nether it's doing quite nice if we if we take a look and look at look at how much nether rack we have already holy cow but more importantly it was for the soul sand we've been talking about soul sand so much look at that look at that almost two hundred thousand. it's crazy it is crazy nutballs um, we set back up the whole, all the, uh, the barrels, getting all the liquids from the quarry, which is really cool. Look at all this. This is all lava. Full. <laughs> Look at that. 7 million. 10 million. It's craziness. All bedrockium. Very cool. I've got the oil going in down here. Not nearly as much oil as the other stuff, but still bedrockium. It's cool. We'll use it eventually. Up here, this is for the water, and I'm using all these, uh, I... It says item translocator, but they're really liquid. It just says that when you set it down. Regardless, I've got it's this Tesseract, which is coming from the Nether Quarry, and it's going into those buckets, and this one's coming from our normal quarry. I fixed that back up. So very cool. We're getting a good amount of blood, too. Blood, this is honey. We still haven't got any honey, and this one is sludge, I think. I think that's how I did it. Maybe those two are mixed up. Anyway, I think it looks pretty cool. This is a little bit better temporary setup. I cleaned up the room a little bit. Still got to choose what our other colors are going to be in King Corp. I know. I know. I try every episode. I try a little bit to, like, make things look good. And I've just been struggling on the design of the windows. This is really what's been holding me up. I don't know what kind of glass I want to do, what color glass I want to do, and what looks like I'm not really hugely fond of this. I actually really like these, these square glass, but when it's completely, I was trying to break it up a little bit, and it just, what looks sometimes good from the inside, doesn't really look all that good from the outside. So, I don't know, that's kind of funny looking. Might want to do something else for a border, but anyway... Just to let you know, I'm messing around with it. I've also been playing around. This is a huge pain in the butt to do. But I've been playing around with doing double double window panes. Just to give it a little bit different of a look. And I, I think that's cool. But that is going to be a huge pain in the butt to get set up. And then this, of course, is just all the edge clear glass. I keep trying to fly through there. Anywho, everything's going all right over here. Our power's been keeping up. Some people in the comments were mentioning they didn't think the solar panels went in like that they could send power out through the side so if that was true these would be full right now and if i look at it look they're empty and they're generating power so it is sending power in so everything's going good everything's going good we found out last time that the 64 times nether generator just isn't working doesn't work isn't a thing it needs a bigger buffer so anyway I've been uh, playing around, getting more soul shards. We got to get more soul shards so we can get more. Now the skulls are what we're lowest on. And no, not space one. Soul shards one. Let's get out. And let's make a new one. So I've still been doing it this getaway. I put at least glass around. Like this, going all the way around. Just so that the, uh, the withers, since they're three tall, they can't get away through that. And, um, yeah, I've just been kind of chilling here and hitting them, and it still takes a while. All these spikes are for those dumb heads. There's dumb little heads that pop out. I don't even know what they're called, but they pop out and they wither me. So I'm trying to make it so that they can still track over to me, but it kills the heads. I think the heads are kind of like spiders where they can climb walls, and I did this so they, they break. But anyway, I had an idea that I wanted to test out with you today. I wanted to see... With the autonomous activator, I know other... Oh, jeez. Withered right off the bat. I know a lot of people were talking about... Or Slip has been doing a lot of stuff with the autonomous activators. And I think Batania. And he found out a lot of the different things that normally see. We have 36 kills. A player has to hold this for it to get the, um, the extra skulls. Um, He found out that an autonomous activator 
actually would charge up a lot of stuff. So I thought, you know what? I wonder if this works for soul shards. I wonder if that could be a thing. Cause that would be way easier to just be able to go AFK, maybe then set up a bunch of these. And then um, over here right now, I have a thing that's set up just to pick up all the drops. So if I want to turn off my magnet, I can, don't have to worry about it. You know, I wonder if the magnet would work in this. That's kind of interesting. I kind of thinking it won't, but anyway. So the big thing is want to have soul stealer on there. So if we take out one of our swords for the test, take out actually this sword. Let's go in here. Let's put down the sword. And the nice thing about this sword is there's no like hit bar. It lasts forever. So we have 60 kills right now. If I stick this in here and then I shut this to ignore redstone. Okay, so it's killing him. I can just stand here and it will hit him. Hopefully that little guy won't get out. They still get out sometimes right here. And if I put a spike there, they won't necessarily track me. So it's kind of annoying. But anyway, let's see. We had 60. Oh man, look it. It's working. It is working. Oh man, that is so cool. That is so cool. So we can have this set up and just go do other things and um, yeah. Have this make our tier five soul shards for us. That is freaking awesome. I'm still in debate whether or not to set up a trap like this for like all different soul shards or whether this is just good enough and we'll shut it off. Cause we have, we have most every mob in a soul shard that we want. I just don't know how many of these we're gonna need to keep up with the farm. So anyway, I'm gonna let this go for a while. Oh, this is so cool. I'm gonna let this go until it fills up to a tier five, which would be 1,024 kills, souls, sweet. And then why don't we set up, um, let's add in all the extra soul shard spawners. All right, guys, let's check on it. Let's check on it. Oh man, we're almost at tier five. We're only a few away. Let's turn it back on. Come on, kill him. Oh, nice, we got a trophy. We get it, we get it. Oh, now this is kind of cool. I did pull it out a couple times, but it will not upgrade the tier until you pull it out. So if we pull it out, bam, tier five. Let's take out our sword too. We're gonna have to make a few more of these imbued swords. Oh, that's sweet. Super sweet, super sweet. Ha ha ha. We got you guys. All right, so let's see what we got. Let's just shut that off. These guys can just hang out there while we check. Let's see. So soul shards, we have wither skeleton. Boom, one, two, three, four more. And we already have two over there. So we have now, I think six total. Super cool, super cool. All right, so let's make some soul cages. Soul cages, so we need four more. Nice. All right, and do we have any of this redstone stuff? All right, cool. So why don't we head over? Let me just kill these guys because I have them set. They'll never despawn otherwise. It's a little annoying, a little annoying. Okay, got everything? Are we back? Get out of this. Okay, we're cool, we're cool. Let's head over to our mob farm. And this is what I'd like to work on today. What I'd like to rework because it's getting a little clustered over here. It's a little messy. See how we have everything right now? We just have the withers there. I have everything else turned off. I think we should have each mob have its own thing. And currently this way, the only way that I have to get in on this one, oh, oh, is to go through the glass. So it's really not that great of a setup. So let's shut this guy off. Oh man, and let's just put these two other ones on. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna yank you out. Let's put in the four new soul cages. Now I know they're not gonna be one hit kills from this height. Now that's okay, that's okay. The spikes, I think the spikes should get them regardless for that final hit. Let's put in, bam, 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 bam. So that should be six, two, four, six, awesome. And then what we can do is we can take these bad boys going up. And I know this is also 
we're losing some spawnable space by doing it this way. But again, not the biggest deal. Not the biggest deal. So why don't we get another few blocks down? We're going to have to do something else. Um, Do I not have any blocks on me? Um, What's not? I don't want to use the most ugly block in the game. <laughs> or wool. Come on, give me something good. We'll use some marble. So we always use marble. All right, so if we do it to here, this way, we won't have any double redstone signal, I think. I think, I think. All right, so let's put the lever lever back on. Let's make sure that these guys die immediately. Oh man, this is not a good spot to be in. Get out, get out, get out. Oh man, it's not ideal, but we'll get it fixed up today. We'll make it better. But I think they die pretty quickly, and we can have up to 40. That's the other thing to keep in mind with these soul shard spawners, is that their cap is not like a normal spawner. Since it's at 40, and we're not exceeding, it doesn't look like 40 at any one time. I know the, the mob entity count goes a little bit higher, but that's because of all these little dumb heads and stuff like that. So we should be good. Should be good. And let's throw this glass up here. And let's figure out what we're going to do for the trap. All right, guys, we're back. We're back. And I want to see now that we have six spawners going all at the same time, I'd like to see how fast we're actually collecting the Wither Skulls, because I really don't feel like it's that fast. I mean, our things are still going, but I think the best way to test it, like this guy's empty right here, I think the best way to test it would probably be to disconnect this guy and this guy, which is feeding in all the skulls that we're getting. So if we just knock this guy off, all the skulls should be just staying in our system now. And I'm fresh out. I'm fresh out. Every skull I have is in all of our wither killers right now. So let's take a look. Wither. Okay, did I spell something wrong? Star. Okay, we have 775 stars yet. So it has gone up. That has gone up. But skulls... Alright, so we only have three. Let's see, how long does it take to go up again? Four. Four. It's really not going that fast. We're definitely using them faster than we're making them. Oh, that's taken a long time. Five. It seems like about every, I don't know, 26. Every 20, 30 seconds. It's almost like every 100-ish wither skulls, or withers that we're killing, we're probably getting about one, maybe even less than that for the rates. That's really not as fast. We need that faster. Now, I don't know if the spikes, I don't know if the spikes do not yield as high of an output of that. It felt like when we're using the grinders, it might have been a little bit faster, but I also could be wrong. I could be wrong. Sometimes it goes fast. So anyway, we need to add in more soul shard spawners and or more different ways to kill them fast. So what's going to be the best way to do that? I really don't want to add more stuff into the overworld. Let's see, how is the overworld doing? You can see right here I did the uh, COFH TPS command, just like that. And we're not running, we're not that hot. We're only at 73%, so we're at 100% of the, the uh, server CPU. If we look at the other worlds here, let's see. So overworld seems to be the most of the problem. The nether is going a good bit since we added in the quarry but that's somewhat to be expected and that's definitely not all me the mining world yeah you can see because i have just as big a quarry in the mining world and that's not nearly doing as much the compact machines world that might be kind of cool people have been talking about the compact machines mod and that i should get into it so you know what why don't we why don't we check that out why don't we check that out compact machines Let's give it a second. All right, guys. So this is pretty cool. I crafted up absolutely everything in compact machines, and it's really not that much. 
these guys aren't really anything. Basically, you got to make a world resizing thing for each of these different cubes. And those have the world resizing interfaces, which is the atom enlarging and atom shrinking modules. And those just the difference in crafting is just between a sticky piston and normal piston. Other than that, they're identical. Then after that, every other different size thing, there's tiny, small, normal, big, giant, and maximum size. And some of them are pretty cheap. They start off with wood. So we have wood. This one would be with iron. This one with gold. Obsidian. Once we get up to the giant, that is with the diamond. And then finally, the most expensive one with nether stars. It's pretty cool that we're able to do. So all the different size ones. And then basically... The only things you can do after that is you can put a nether star on it. If we were to right click a nether star, it would make it so that you could pick up the world and set it back down and then everything that's inside of it would stay inside of it. So it's pretty neat concept um, being able to have a whole like we could fit this whole system right in here instead of having all these machines right here at our base, we could have it all with just one machine, stick it on bam and that's everything so pretty neat pretty neat indeed um now the concept of how these works now as i said if you put the nether star you right click it on there it will make it so that you can pick up the machine and move it somewhere else so pretty neat then there's one other there's one other thing quantum entangler we'll get into that later um anyway you're gonna want to also make this personal shrinking device this is basically just what you use to warp between dimensions so Taking a look at the first one, we're not going to look at every single one. It's a pretty easy idea. This is the smallest one possible. Okay, cool. And it's just a three by three. So if you can do something in a really small area, you know, this may be good enough for you. Now notice up on our map, we're at, in this dimension, the compact world dimension, we're at X 1859. We're at one, level one, so that's cool. And this is pretty much, I would assume, a void dimension. So there's really not much loading involved our fps is pretty high if we take a look there 150 not bad not bad at all so pretty neat now what are these things these are basically the inputs of all the different sizes sides of the machine so it can do all three things liquid items and power all at the same time this is the east side of the machine and we can have it disabled importing exporting or auto i'm assuming auto is input and output that's what I would assume that means. And then disabled. Cool. And we have that for the bottom top, left, uh, north, northwest, east, south directions. Pretty neat. Then you want to get back out. You just right click and it plops you right back where you came in. So pretty neat. So this is a three by three for the small one. Then it jumps up to a five by five, seven by seven, um, nine by nine, 11 by 11. And then the max size one, which is probably mostly what we're going to be working with. It is expensive, but this guy is going to be a 13 by 13. So pretty big. I I'd like to see it even bigger just because um, if we're doing like fall damage traps, 13 blocks isn't far enough to bring a mob down to a one hit kill. So that's a little unfortunate. That's my only peeve about the size thing, but pretty neat. Now, I want you to notice if we take this transfer pipe here and we set it down and we did not put any obsidian or anything in. So um, let's plop back out or we didn't put the nether star on. If we then take this and pick it back up and then set it back down and go in there. <laughs> the server's having problems. So I'm hopping through dimensions. Notice everything's gone. And I didn't even take notice. We may be in a completely new cube. I'm assuming that's why we lost what was in the other one. I, would, I, I don't know. I don't think we got it back either. Let's just test that one more time. If I set that down and we are in... We'll see in a second. So that's cube number 31. If we pick it up. I don't think we got anything back. I didn't notice getting anything back. So that was 31. And now, oh, I bet you when we go in there, see there's nothing assigned to it. I bet that would be 32. 
once we went into it. So every time you pick it up, it's probably going to end up breaking that machine. So that's why we didn't get the stuff back out. But if we put the star down, then it will keep it. So cool. It will remember what's in there once you break it. So interesting. So anyway, let's test out now the whole thing with items. This area is chunk loaded. I have right now energy going in from the windmills. So receiving energy. And then we have items up here and liquids, which I'm going to throw this tesseract, which is our water one. So that should be putting water in. You can see it's filling up. Now notice nothing's going on. It shouldn't be doing anything else because I don't have anything else on the inside. It'll go up to whatever the top buffer is. Now, when we look at this, so we should have the max power, energy, items of everything. In fact, I'll even grab some more items just to make sure. So let's get a whole bunch in there. Cool. So all this stuff's going in. Now, this should be able to receive, it looks like RF is the energy of choice. In fact, maybe it's only RF, only as a 10,000 buffer. That's a little bit unfortunate. That's going to limit us on a lot of stuff that we're doing if that is its max RF a tick. It might not even be that a tick, but I would assume that's per tick. For the items, I just want to see, we'll see how fast it goes through. Um, let's get some speed upgrades for both the uh, item and the water. Let's get stack. I just want to see how quickly it can pass items through its buffer. I almost wish it didn't really have a buffer because that seems like it's what's slowing things down. So if we have that stack at a time in 64, we should see stuff go through really quickly has at least the, uh, the capacity to. So if this comes out, boom, filled up immediately. Awesome. Now, these work with Ender IO, so really just about anything that's RF. Ender IO should work with uh, thermal expansion, and we're going to test out right now. I haven't seen anybody use extra utilities with it. Let's find out if that works. Let's get our where's our resizing thing. Bam. So this isn't the max size. This is the uh, nine by nine, I believe. So we have this guy coming in here, and right now it's on disabled. So why don't we just finish setting up the system? So if we have our pipes going down and let's grab a chest to get our items. So chest, let's grab a capacitor bank to get our power and let's grab, what else do we want to grab? And a drum to get our liquid. Okay, cool. So now since it's chunk loaded in the overworld where we are, Let's find out if this works or is this a separate inventory? So importing and it's doing nothing. Oh, wait, wait a minute. It is going. No items, no anything. All right. So it doesn't make it side by side. Let me pull that extra energy out of there. That was probably from when I held it from our little charge thing. All right, so it's not getting anything. That's a little unfortunate that it doesn't. Yeah, it's actually like a separate inventory. So if we wanted this to continue on, we'd have to choose only one, I think. No, we wouldn't have to choose only one, but we'd have to set this up a little bit differently. So let's try this. So if we go retrieval node items, retrieval node liquids, and, oh, and we'd need to use this type of pipe, I think, instead. So let's try this out. So let's put on retrieval node liquids. Bam, retrieval node items. Bam. And I don't think, I think we have to use a node up here to work. I think the node though should be able to pass through everything else. So let's see if this is working at least with those two. So it's taken a moment. Let's put in a stack upgrade and some speed upgrades. All 
All right, so we're seeing it go through. And it's a little slow. How's this guy doing? Yeah, for the liquids, it only does a bucket at a time. That's like really, wait, water. Yeah, it's only a bucket at a time. That's really unfortunate. Really unfortunate. Um, for the items, how are we doing? Oh, you know what? It's doing an item loop right here. Let's go ahead and get out our wrench. Let's go like that. This should look a little bit better. Yeah. So it did the liquid. It did that fine. I think if we went with a... I want to see if you can pull through this. I've never tried this before. But does that let it still pull the items and everything? Let's grab all that. The liquid... It's not full yet. Let's quickly go to the other side. And is that getting power yet? That's not getting power. Is the liquid still going up? Yeah, so the liquid does look like it's able to pull. Or is that from that? You are able to pull through it. Oh, and that's because that's not connected. Let's go like that. Awesome. So we're, we're able to pass everything through. That is super sweet, super sweet indeed. That's neat. So we can play around with this and any scenarios where these, in fact, in most cases, I'm probably not gonna even bother using these. I'm probably just gonna use a Tesseract within the room and just use this as a separate dimension. But it's pretty neat. We can set up a farm. We could have it. So let's say we had the uh, skeletons being killed in here. We could set it up so that there's an output for the uh, the nether skulls to go uh, to go out one of the sides. It's pretty neat. Um, I heard that even AE wire will connect up with this. So maybe I don't think I have any on me, but that's pretty neat. We'd be able to just throw on... A wireless thing and be able to use it in our system in this dimension so that's really neat that's really neat I like it now there's one other option that you can do is with a quantum entangler and that's basically so that you can just link up two separate of the boxes to take you to the same box I guess or you could output multiple things but they'd have to be the exact same size I think I think. I haven't tried it yet. So anyway, we tested this. It works. It's a little bit slower in the buffers. Let's do the items. I want to see how quickly it actually can push through. Oh, man. Push through the items. And it's going pretty quick, but... I... Yeah, that's not, that's not horrible. That is not horrible at all. Any case, um, why don't we start to work on with the max size... Why don't we start working on a mob, uh, a little mob trap for the wither skulls that can be inside of this compact machine. All right, guys, I've been messing around with this for a good little bit. I threw another star on it. It's kind of neat when you throw the nether star on, it does like a little bit. You know what? Let me show you. Let me show you. Actually, I don't know if I want to show. Well, I'll show you. So if we take this, we right click. See, it does that little white border. Pretty neat, pretty neat. So now we can pick it up and move it around. So I've been just just kind of testing things out to see what works. Supposedly, the uh, Project Red, Redstone Wire, is supposed to be able to go through. I think I'm just not connecting it right because I can't seem to get it to work the way you're supposed to. I don't know. I tried it with bundled wire too, and it doesn't seem to connect right. I go like that, it does, but I'm having problems sending... Signal through. Anyway, not important. Just wanted to let you know. So let's pick this up. I want to start getting both test out and see if we can get AE going into this. Because it's a real pain in the butt having to walk back and forth every time. So let's set this down. We should have plenty of signal left over. Let's set this down right here for now. 
And if we grab an AE wire, should be able to just connect it. Boom, awesome, it's connecting. So let's go in. All right, oh, now what side was that? I think that's the south side. We'll just, we'll go with it. We'll see if it's, if it actually is. Okay, I think that's it. Let's throw on a wireless thing, my bobber. See, is it gonna connect? We'll go through, was that the right side? Yes, look at that. It works. Oh, super cool. So anyway, here's what I was trying to test out for the uh, the whole wireless redstone is if these were the spawners and then it would turn them on and off like that. So I don't know, we'll figure something out. I can also just use wireless redstone if I can't get it working right. In any case, um, I'm trying to figure this out. This room really isn't the best for doing like spawners, but hey, um, I think what I'm gonna do since there's not much drop distance and we're gonna have six spawners in here at least attempt six spawners in here let's get a layer of spikes going throughout the whole thing then underneath that a layer of grinders going through the whole thing and uh, see how it goes and if we have it at this height and above it gives us at least access to these side parts over here if we have it down that's a problem if you have it down lower these side parts are gonna be within the mob trap. And then I made sure for the spawners, we have one, two, three, four. This is the maximum distance away they can spawn. I wanted to ensure that no mobs would spawn outside of the room, at least if there's anything we can control. So let's see here, spikes. So I crafted up a whole bunch of spikes. The spikes will be at this level. So it'll be like that, and they'll go all the way across. In fact, let me just set them in completely. All right, so we got all the grinders in place. Everything looks good. Um, I may have to separate these with um, micro blocks just so they don't cross to make it a little more efficient, but we'll find out. I'm really hoping that we should be able to power this with one hyper transfer node. But I guess we'll just have to test it to try out, to find out. So I think we should be able to just connect this bad boy um, right there. And then this guy is receiving energy from our capacitor banks. So we'll stick you right there. So you can see it's full immediately. And um, yeah, let's go ahead. Let's throw that like that, there, and there. All the grinders should be filling up shortly. Get it going faster. Again, I'm still not positive how necessary speed upgrades are. 105 connections, that's a lot of connections that has to check. But we can see they're all completely full now. So I'll play, I'll tinker around with that. Um, anyway, next we have to deal with is the liquid. All right, so we're gonna have that there. Let's do two. This is going to be our liquid guy, right there. And then we can get out a liquid transfer node. Boom, sweet. We can fill this guy up with upgrades. Again, how necessary it is, I don't know, but we can do it if we need to. In fact, I'm not gonna put any upgrades into there yet. Okay, and then from this side, or actually from right here in the top, this one will definitely want upgrades. We'll do a liquid retrieval node. Right like that. This one will do a whole bunch of upgrades on. So all the liquid that comes in will go fill up into this bed rocking drum, then get spit out. And we're gonna do, it's on the mob essence, so receive energy and send fluid. Cool. So that's really all set. That's all we need to do. Of course, there's items. How do we wanna do the items? 
So I was thinking, at least for now, just so things don't clog up, I know this is kind of messy. I would never normally do this, but we can do it. Let's see. If we grab an ME interface. So we got our ME interface. I'm a little nervous to do this, but... Um... If we connect to this bad boy right here... In fact, you know what? We can connect it right like that and not be on that block. I'll, I'll test that out to find out whether that's something we need to worry about. But let's now grab our ME wire. Ham. Grab that ME wire. Let's send that back up here. And this will take all the items out that we get if we do. Oh, and how many blocks up is this? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we're fine. We're fine, we're fine. We are going to just use one of these retrieval nodes. Bam. And let's just set these all up. We don't need it quite to the max, but we're going to set it to the max anyway. So that'll get all the items that are both above the spikes or get spit out by these things. We have a chunk loader. We have our liquid and power going. Everything should be A-OK. -okay. Again, my only concern here was maybe putting in those micro blocks. But anyway, let's see how this works. Let's go run out. Let's get all the spawners. All right, guys, got the soul shards. Bam, the six. We're going to lay this in in a second. I just did a test for coming into here with a block there, and it seemed to do fine. It just, instead of spawning outside, I spawned right on top. So that's cool. I want to do one small little change just for fun, just for fun. We are going to take a filter pipe here. So we'll just go like that, bam. Let's knock that guy off. We're going to move this over ever, ever so slightly. Just like that. And then we're going to put a diamond chest right here. Actually, one more. What do I want to do the diamond chest? We're going to do it two up. Or no, two over. So we'll go diamond chest right like that. Sweet. And then we're going to pull out with the item transfer node. That is black going down. Do we have any skulls? No, we have none. So we're going to have to wait for the skulls to come in place. So let's knock that guy out for now. Let's put that on so we'll get everything. And then once we put on the filter, we can set it so that it outputs the skulls downward, just so that it's a little bit of fun. So anyway, let's hop up on top. And I still don't have a good way of doing this, but what the hey, what the hey. All right, so we knocked all those out. Let's put in the spawners. Bam, bam. Bam, bam. Bam, bam. And this way, we're going to have both spikes and... Why am I missing two spawners? Oh, we only had six. That was enough for eight. Oh, well then. Well then. All right, just to balance it out, we'll go like that. All right, sweet. I suppose I could do the redstone going down there. Maybe I'll just go... Let's get some more red alloy wire. Bam. Alright, and then we'll go across. We'll just make the switch so that it's... One above? One above. That's good. Okay, so that'll turn them on and off. They should all be off right now. Let's grab out our shards. All right. All right, so as soon as we flip that switch, it should be active. Let's get a last spike. All right, you guys ready? You're ready. So it poop, should poop out all the excess items. 
Oh my goodness! It's going nuts! It's going nuts! <laughs> Alright, this doesn't test out the system too well when I have my magnet on. Now does it? Okay, so it should be picking everything up. Alright, we got a skull. Perfect. Alright, so let's put on our filter. Skull. So all the skulls will go down there. This should be now filling up with only skulls. And are we going to see the skulls get pulled out? No, not until that gets pulled out. Alright, so here we can just set our interface. In fact, I'm going to set an ender chest. For now. Just so that we can see all the items get picked up. Let's go ahead, let's put in stack speed. All right, cool. And we got all the heads going in there. Sweet! Everything seems like it's going good. There shouldn't ever be more than 40 skeletons at any one time. And it looks like it's working. Are you guys doing okay? Yep, they're full on power, that's for sure. It's got plenty of mob juice. I don't think there's anywhere for the essence to go yet. Okay. So, let's get out of here. Let's go back home. Sweet. Now, because we're using the ender chest now, there's nothing we really need the AE for. At least at this current moment in time. So, I should be able to just pick that up. This still should be going on. We can see it's still going on. Alright, and then now if I take a barrel, it's supposed to be... Oh, I forgot to set the input. The input and output thing. Alright, so that should be now facing down. It should... I know it can go into a chest. We'll see if it goes into the barrel. Alright, down. We can see him right there. Let's just hop back and change that setting. You know what, this might be better using that anyway, instead of bothering with AE at all. But okay, let's go here, and this is going to be exporting. Perfect, so we saw the skulls go out there. Let's see when we get out. Oh baby, I love it! I love it! The world's smallest wither farm! Oh man, in a single block. That is so amazing, guys. That is amazing. I love it. I love it to death. <laughs> oh, that is so cool. Single block Wither Skull Farm. Sweet. So we can now pay attention to see how fast we're getting them, how many we have to add, and I will, I'll keep on trying to improve this system, but it seems like it's doing okay. Still not fast enough, but hey... We can always add in more spawners and just keep on throwing stuff at it till we get all the skulls we need. That is sweet. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the compact machines. We'll try and do more with it. I think it will be even more useful as we get into doing our uh, different smelting automation and all sorts of stuff with machines. That's where it will be a real help. But that's pretty cool as far as a single block and we can have all of our wither skeletons. Look at that, almost 40 already. That's awesome. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the episode, don't forget to hit a thumbs up. If you have any other advice for the compact machines, or if you know how the whole redstone part of it goes, I, can't, I just couldn't figure it out. Let me know in the comments below. Any other tips or tricks are always appreciated. Or if you just want to say hi, that's cool too. And um, other than that, enjoy your weekend, guys. Thanks for watching, and peace out.